Hi guys, and welcome back to Reads Readers with your host, Clinton Reed. Now I know I'm in a slightly different setup. This is, we're playing around with the library. We're trying to fit another bookcase in, so I might be filming in this corner. I don't know. It's called, we gonna test this corner out and see how I do. But the rest of the library is still sort of a mess, so that's kind of why we're here, because it looks good. But I'm bringing with you guys today my June wrap up. Oh, this would also be my season of fun wrap up. Hold on, let me grab a piece of paper. I didn't even think of that. Let me grab this. I'll use this and tell you every book and how it counts, could count towards. Um, Seasonathon. Cause it's been a month, guys. It, it, it's been, it's been, Life ruins. Ooh, lots of bubbles. They said this over here. Yeah. Oh, it's life has been life. So, I'm also liking this whole I want to do more close up videos because I was going back through my videos, and that's kind of how my channel started was more close up. Granted. I do want to take you back just a hair. Just a hair. Cool. Cool. I'm sorry I'm a mess. Okay, guys. Hashtag Team Chaos. Y'all know me here. But let's just get into the stats. Because I know people like Karina really likes hearing my stats. So... They, uh, in the month of June, I read 12 books, none of which were under four stars. I did read one four star, three 4.5 stars, and eight five stars. I did no zero, uh, no zero rereads, did zero rereads. Nine of my books have queer representation in the main character. Eight have rom romance as a major plot line in the story and I read a total of 3,733 pages plus I found my new favorite book of the year so mother in June let's just get into this and we'll start with my one four star which I did an entire video on and that is Rise of the Snake Goddess by Jenny Elder Mook, which is book two in the Samantha Knox series. This follows Samantha Knox in an Indiana Jones inspired story. In book one, they had to find, save a Celtic story. This one's more Greek with a legendary snake goddess who I'm just going to leave this alone because I did an entire video. So go check that out. And thank you again, Disney and Rockstar Tours, for allowing me to read this. I don't know what to do with these. Ooh, put, put them there. Now to my 4.5s, I had three 4.5s. They were almost perfect books for me. Oh, and... Rise of the Snake Goddess was actually a five-star prediction for me, but it ended up not being. So I could have counted it for a five-star prediction, but I didn't in the thing, but hey. Next is I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuestin, which this solidified Casey McQuestin as an all-time favorite author. Great, and I did give this 4.5 out of five stars. Ooh, excuse me. Like I gave um, one last stop because 
these just haven't hit the level of red, white, and royal blue for me on how it changed my life. But this follows um, Chloe Green, who gets kissed by her rival, her rival, Shara Wheeler, and it's all about her teaming up with Shara's boyfriend and the bad boy, do it, Rory, hold on, the boyfriend, Rory and Smith, hold on, so boyfriend's name is Rory and the bad boy's name is, um, sorry, boyfriend's name is Smith. Bad boy's name is Rory, and it follows them three trying to hunt down I kiss Shara. <laughs> they were all kids by Shara, and Shara disappears, and then it's all about them trying to find Shara, and the events that happened after it by following all these letters. And the l religious trauma is real with this book, so... I absolutely loved it. <coughs> Net, which I read this one for a fave author or an autobi author. So, good on me. Next is May the Best Man Win by Z.R. Eller, who is an amazing human being, and I follow him on TikTok, and I've been wanting to read his book, so... This follows Jeremy, who is a cheer captain and studio body and president, who broke up his, with his boyfriend Lucas right before their senior year and came out as transgender and came at, and comes back to school senior year as Jeremy. I will warn you with this book, there is a lot of homophobia transphobia um there's a lot of disability representation in here um people make fun of mental dis disorders and stuff like that also be warned there are off page attempted rape but i absolutely loved this this was amazing. I loved all the representation, Lucas and Jeremy, and it's all about how Jeremy comes to terms with being who he is and is running for prom king against Lucas, his ex-boyfriend, and the stuff that ensues. It's just an amazing time. And I read this and counted this for queer, trans, and non-binary representation. Next was the group book for season a thon, and that is Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. I am so happy we chose this as our group book. This is the most beautiful book we have ever read for season a thon, inside and out. This follows Clara, who's an ever witch, who's coming to terms with being a witch that keeps her powers in every season. And it's about her meeting, is it Song? I can't remember if it's Song or Sang. It's Sang. The audiobook said Song and the author told us it's Sang, who I absolutely love. And I am so happy for anyone who joined us with this and joined us in the live show. Rachel was amazing. Like I said, I'm just going to fly through some of these so I can do this wrap up so these books can get my butt up on the shelves. Um, oh, and I read that one for uh, the group book, obviously. I will also tell you bisexual representation. have never seen it so pure and honest. It's been a long time. Fucking hot in Oklahoma. 
Green light's not open. Okay, now we're into all the rest of these books are five stars. Now I'm gonna start with this one because this is the one that like, kind of a surprise, kind of not, but it's really hard to review this one. But this is The Pride of the Hunkies by Andrew Cardinal, which is a children's book made for adults about a little boy who has always been different and then he meets a unicorn who teaches him how to become his true authentic self, a proud hunky, and then they bring the power of hunkies to others. This is by a local author and I wanted to support and I was very curious because I know he's coming out with a drag queen version and a lesbian version. We also got some gorgeous artwork, which is somewhere, I think it's up there, but I'm not sure, that we're gonna do like a little section for it. This is gonna go displayed in the living room. And I'm just so proud to have this. I also submitted it as Queer Any, even though it's like only 25 pages. Next, we have mm. Fight Island Volume 2, which I absolutely loved. I will tell you, this just follows all the characters from the first one. It's sometimes it's a little bit in the past, sometimes it's a little bit in the future, but it follows all the characters from the last one and all their new relationships. A lot of ass on the back and a lot of dick. A lot of fucking going on in this. A lot. And I'm here for it. And I put this down for a graphic novel or manga. Next, I also have a video on this one as well. And that is The Last Fallen Moon by Gracie Kim, which is book two in the Gifted Clan series. I want to thank again Rick Riordan, Disney Publishing, and Rockstar Tours for allowing me to read and review this. This just follows Riley O and the events from the first one. So I will link down below this review and Snake Goddess's review down below so that you guys can go check those out if you have not watched them. This book, this series is phenomenal and is becoming one of my favorite middle grade series. And this one was a five star prediction. Or I could count it as a middle grade mystery because there's like a mystery that has to be solved throughout it, but. Next, we have In Deeper Waters by F.T. Luggins. This I read for Five Star Prediction. This is one of Sterling's all time favorites. This is also a Little Mermaid retelling and made queer. And it is fucking phenomenal. This follows Tal and Athlan. Tal is the youngest prince in this area who has to go on tour the land. And he meets Athlan, who Athlan is a mermaid. And Tal is the last magician is it magician or mage i can't remember what they called him i want to say it's magician of it and it's just their cute romance and the things that ensue if you've seen pirates of the caribbean this is a lot like that as well so i highly recommend it because tal and athlan oh have my heart they are so adorable Again, like I said, I read this for five-star prediction because this is on my five-star queer predictions list. Next, we have 
As Good as Dead by Holly Jackson, the final book to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And by the way, this is one of the best endings to a series I have ever read. My anxiety was so fucking high with this book. You can ask Nikki and Tracy how we were feeling. All three of us were on edge. This solidified this is one of my all-time favorite series. I want to know what Holly Jackson is working on next. Like, I need it now, 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 and now. Like, oh my god. But if you do not know what A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is, it follows Pip, right? Yeah, Pip as she is solving a murder that she doesn't for her... Let me rephrase that. She is solving a murder for her senior project because she doesn't think the person that was blamed was the key person who did it and the things that ensue and this just follows the events after the second and after all the crap in the first and second one and this shit oh my god also a lot of podcast references and elements in it amazing and I read this for a contemporary author I have read before. Next, I have She's Too Pretty to Burn by Wendy Hurd. Oh, yeah. This is a an electric romantic set against a rebel art scene. Sparks lethal danger for two girls and then this expertly plotted teen thriller. That is the best way I could have summed this up. This is also a Pictures of Dorian Gray retelling. I can't stop thinking about this book. This was also gifted to Sterling for Christmas from Tracy. So thank you, Tracy, for that. Because this book is just uh, inspired by a picture of Dorian Gray in this sexy psychological thriller explores the intersections of love, art, danger, and power. I will not tell you any more past that because I think you need to go into this a little blind. All I will say is I read this for season of thon for a sapphic queer book. And this is by far one of my favorite YA queer novels of all time. Just saying. Next, we have the, the Civil War of Amos Abenasi by Michael Laley. This is Sterling's favorite middle grade of all time, so I had to read it, and I absolutely love this. This follows Amos Abenasi, who is a... Civil War reenactment person. He is 13 years old, I do believe. And he has been part of the Ch Chickory County Living History Park as a historical reenactor almost since he was old enough to walk. His mother is the park supervisor. And it's all about him trying to find queer history during the time of Civil War where he finds a person named Albert and he writes letters to Albert every other chapter. is kind of like a letter and about his crush on a boy named Finn and all the history you learn of queerness and how Albert was a trans individual who fought for the Civil War, fought for the Union and the one with the United States fought on their side and then lived the rest of his life as a man. And I am so happy this is out there in the world and I think more people need to read this stunning novel. And I read this for a middle grade by a new to me author. And last but not least, my new favorite book of the year, I have never been so identified in a YA or in a queer book ever, and it kind of scared me. 
but that is Book Boyfriend by Chris Ripper, where we follow P.K. Preston P.K. Harrington III. He is a writer, he's not cliche, and he's secretly in love with his best friend, Art, who he accidentally writes an entire novel about his feelings, and then Art reads said novel and loves, says it's his new favorite thing, and he can't tell Art that he wrote it. That's all I'm gonna say. This also has non-binary representation, this has anxiety rappers, like this has a lot of representations in it. And I think more people need to read this. This is also written by a non-binary author who goes by the Zer pronouns. I hope I'm pronouncing that. Z-I-R, that's pronounced as Zer, right? And Chris Ripper, I will be reading more of Zer works in the future because Chris has the potential of becoming a new favorite author for me. And I read this for Queer Any. So, the only two major challenges I did not complete was a paranormal adult book and my oldest on my TBR, which I'm still currently listening to. Other than that, I think this was a phenomenal camp season of fun. I also again want to thank everybody who is on in the Rainbow Cabin with me. I am so honored and that you guys would read that many pages and come join my team. We may not have came in first, but we weren't last. And that's all that matters is we weren't last. all I've got for you guys today. If you've read any of these books, let me know. Um, if you took part in Camp Seasonathon, comment down below and tell me what's the best book you read during Seasonathon outside of the group book, because I know the group book is now some people's all-time favorite books. Um, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. And if you're new, hit that subscribe. I am only three-ish people away from 500. So it'd be really cool to hit 500. And I'm still kind of shocked that there's 500 of you guys that want to be here with me. Oh, did I break something? Did I break something? <gasps> I did. But I am still amazed that there are so many people who want to be here on my channel. I am a nobody from Oklahoma. So having almost 500 subscribers, it like means the world to me. So I want to say a big thank you to all of you guys. So I love you guys. And remember kids, always be fabulously yourself. Until next time, <gasps> bye! -bye.